There is a nervous excitement hovering over this ballpark. We're going to see history tonight. We always do. It's game seven. The Royals are going for their second in team history, their first since 1985. The Giants will be going for their eighth world championship and their third over the last five years. It's been an incredibly unpredictable World Series with the momentum shifting back and forth. The Giants and the Royals have squeezed every drop they can out of this season and out of this postseason. One game and your whole season is riding on it. That's baseball's premier game. It's the calm before the storm right here. Watch this guy. Game seven is played on the razor's edge between fame and infamy. Every pitch, every swing, and tonight, every decision. We are just about set to go. Oh boy. Now they finally take the field. Well, this will be awesome. Let's go. If you are a believer in numerology and the power of even numbers, then the start of the 2014 season offered an intriguing opportunity for the San Francisco Giants. It all began in 2010. The Giants are world champions! And after winning again in 2012, they have the chance to continue their uncanny World Series trend this year. I'm not sure if there is anything to the even year. I know that at the end of uh, 2013, a lot of us were, were pretty run down and uh, felt like if we could kind of regroup in the offseason, we felt like coming into the season, we had a chance to make a run and being in the playoffs. I think it speaks to their consistency, not only from a health standpoint, but from a performance standpoint that they've put themselves in a position, you know, to morph from one team to the next. Brian is the uh, architect of this club, and he did such a great job of keeping uh, these core players that we had in 2010, 2012. And as he often does, Sabian added some key ingredients, men who would fit in well with the team's unique chemistry. If zombies took over the world, just call me before that happens so I know where you're at. Then he looked to his masterful manager to turn that springtime mix into a championship October blend. He's kind of a magician. He feels the heartbeat and the pulse, and, and he sees things and angles that you don't even realize that he sees, not only with what's going on on the field, but what's going on in the clubhouse. Even year. Watch mm -hmm. out for the Giants. Mm -hmm. So if the even year pattern held true, 2014 would be another magical season for the city by the bay. And it sure started out that way. The Giants displayed eye-popping power, ranking second in the National League for homers through May. This baby is out of here! A two-run homer for Buster Posey! And early on, their pitching followed suit, highlighted by their 24-year-old ace. Tenth strikeout for Bumgarner. Bum was given the ace title this year. Bochy felt that he was ready to step into that role, and he's done exactly that. That was a big deal for me. Your team and the manager has enough faith in you. It's very special. The Giants looked every bit like a championship contender in 2014, one destined to make good in its third straight even-numbered year. It is out of here! We are headed home! Two of their key pickups were excelling. A pitcher... Swing and a miss. He struck him out. 39 years old coming off an ankle injury. That's definitely not something that I truly anticipated at this point in my career. Hudson's going to win his fourth game in April. He's never done that before. I felt like it gave us a really good chance to win every time out there. And a power hitter, one who fit right in. All the way to the wall. Goodbye! A home run way out there in center field. That's why they picked him up. Morris with power to all fields. Coming a giant, it's been such a incredible eye-opening on how 25 guys have each other's back at any moment of time. There's so many things that make this team special, and, and I think it starts with the humility of all of the superstars that are in there, 
Um, there's guys with MVPs and Cy Youngs and multiple World Series rings, but every man looks at the other man as an equal. We're all family. Uh, not one person is bigger than the other. This winning formula enabled the Giants to forge a 42 and 21 mark by early June, the best in the majors. That first month or two, we were just on a roll. When we were getting great starts, we scored just enough runs. And then if we didn't have great starts, it seemed like our hitters were picking our starters up. Brandon Hicks has won it for the Giants. The bullpen was on fire, getting outs everywhere. It was a great feeling. It felt like every day you came in the ballpark, you were going to win a game. Tonight. It was during this winning stretch that Pence introduced the yes factor. I always try to do a unique handshake with everyone. It started all with Tyler Colvin coming up to the team. Our handshake, you know, was our little, you know, do the knuckle thing, and then we were going to do the yes, yes, yes. And he told me, he goes, hey, if I hit a home run, I'm doing it. And sure enough, he did it. He hit a homer. And he start, He came in, coming down the steps doing this, and I was like, oh, i got to join him. And I had shown Michael Morse the yes movement before. So we just started doing the yes thing whenever we hit a home run. But there wasn't much to cheer about in the middle of the season, for the Giants struggled. We started a season on fire, and then we had some very low lows, and players bootstrapped it, Bruce Bochy bootstrapped it. There was a grit and determination and a belief in each other. Yet even in these trying times, there were some bright spots. Slider struck him out swinging. Two-time Cy Young winner Tim Lincecum looked like his old self. The throw to first, pitcher no hitter. And Lincecum has done it again. He is no hit The San Diego Padres. And rookie call-up Joe Panic offered stability at second. As we settled into bringing him up and playing him more, we realized that he could handle higher uh, position in the order and when he took over the second spot it, it really not only lengthened our lineup but it made it more dynamic his first big league home run is a big one giants take the lead stuck in a tight division race as the trade deadline neared the giants picked up a former national league cy young winner in boston's jake peavy we thought if we got him back over here with national league we gotta have a oh, let's go, go. Come on. You know, he had a chance to resurrect himself or get back to pitch better baseball. Jake Peavy pitching some really good baseball in the seven starts with the San Francisco Giants. Soon after Peavy's arrival, the Giants began to surge, sparked by one hitter who busted out in the second half. Home run for Buster Posey. Stay hot, Mr. Posey. Stay hot. I was able to find that groove in the second half. When I was getting a good pitch to hit, I felt like I was able to drive the ball. Catcher like Buster Posey, an incredible talent who's already led us to two World Series. He's the one that's handling the staff. He's the one that's really running the game out there. Madison Bumgarner with a masterpiece. He got away, nice job. An amazing effort by Eusperro Petit, complete game victory. This team really did not want to give in. Even through the hard times, like we came together and kept pushing and kept believing. Come on, Pablo. Adios, Pelota. You know, we had a big slump in the middle of the year, and, and we broke out of it, and I think that had a lot to do with our attitude and how we never give up. The season ended up being the good, the bad, the ugly, the good, then the great. Bumgarner gets his 18th win of the year. Without the start, I don't know if we make it to the finish line with 88 wins. Those 88 victories were enough to secure the second wild card berth and the prospect of postseason baseball at AT&T Park. Do you guys want to see another game here at home? Yes! Yes! I figured that it'd be fun to be together with the fans and to do something together and because we wanted to have another game at home. One more time. Yes, yes, yes. Looking forward to seeing you. Thank you. It just caught on like wildfire, and it was kind of the postseason rallying cry. Unlike their championship runs in 2010 and 12, San Francisco would begin the 2014 postseason with a win-or-go-home wildcard game against the surging Pittsburgh Pirates. What a scene here in Pittsburgh. Pirates fans are ready to go. Going into the wild card game in Pittsburgh, 
with the crowd being all rowdy and as amped up as ever, we were definitely in a hostile environment. It's a blackout here in Pittsburgh tonight, and listen to this ballpark. It was probably the loudest I can remember a stadium being, you know, even before the game started. A curveball in the dirt struck him out swinging. It was very intense and exciting. If you don't want to play in a game like that, then, you know, you're probably in, in the wrong business. Madison looked like the best in the business early on. And in the fourth inning, the Giants offense sought to back him up. What an opportunity for the Giants here with Crawford coming up. Bases loaded, nobody out. When Crawford came up and we got that opportunity, bases loaded, he got two strikes. I was on second base and I just remember looking at him. I was like, he is so calm right now. And, and within me was all this adrenaline and like, oh my gosh, this is, a, well, this is crazy. And, you know, Crawford's just as calm as can be. One and two. And Crawford hits a high fly ball right field. Snyder going back. He's looking up. It's gone. Brandon Crawford has launched a grand slam, and the Giants have taken a 4-0 lead and totally silenced this crowd. To get four runs with Bum on the mound, I mean, you can't help but feel good about your chances after that. Bum Garner starting to build a postseason legend. A four-hit shutout for the left-hander, and the Giants come to Pittsburgh and subdue the Pirates 8 to nothing. It was unbelievable, and... Uh... Uh, kind of jump started our postseason for us. We got another big series coming up. Will we be at home this year again? Yes! 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 <laughs> but before they could head home, the Giants would begin the division series in another hostile environment, facing the team with the most wins in the National League, the Washington Nationals. I think you have to start with PV, uh, you know, with the tone he set for us in that first game. Here it goes. We're revving it up. The pitch. He struck him out. PV pitched shutout ball into the sixth, and Buster banged out a seventh inning RBI that proved to be the game winner. And the Giants have stolen game one on the road, a 3 to 2 win in D.C. Game two was a pitcher's duel between Jordan Zimmerman and Tim Hudson. Hudson's effort, uh, I mean, what a great game that was. He found a way to keep us in the game. He pitches uh, up to the eighth inning. Swing and a miss. He has been magnificent tonight. But into the ninth, the Giants had yet to score, stymied by the almost unhittable Zimmerman. The way that he was pitching, I thought that we were going to have a tough luck, you know, one to nothing loss. Ball for the tying run aboard. Jordan Zimmerman leads to a hero's exit. They went to the bullpen. I was thinking, man, you know what? We might have a chance to, to at least tie this ball game up. The base hit could tie the game. Sand the ball into the opposite field. That's a fair ball. Panic scores, and this game is tied. The game went into extra innings tied at one, where Yusmero Petit came up huge. Petit, I mean, what a warrior he was. Uh, Going six innings. The pitch from Petit is strike three call. You're on the road, and uh, it makes it a little bit tougher in a tie ball game, but he found a way to get it done. Swings and misses at the curveball, strike three. His seventh strikeout, and Yusmero Petit has helped keep the Giants in this game. The job Petit did that night, I personally think he is one of the best really appearances ever in postseason history. This game has set a major league record. It's the longest in postseason history. Five hours, 53 minutes, and counting. Yeah, at a point in that 18 inning game, I think I was uh, borderline delirious. Top of the 18th, Brandon Belt now. He's been held hitless tonight. Belt with a drive, hammered to deep right field, and that one is gone! The defining moment to me was the 18 inning game in Washington. That's the ball game. What an amazing gut check victory. I think that they had 10 bottom of the ninths literally to beat us and couldn't do it. We shut them out. And the Giants take a 2 0 lead in this five game series. It really speaks volumes of what this team was about. Following a game three loss, the Giants showed their resolve and some stellar defense in game four. Worth into the opposite field. Pence back at the wall and makes the catch! What an amazing effort by an amazing player. He hit it pretty well. As I was running, I was like, get as close to the wall as you can, as fast as you can. As it got closer and closer, I just was like, all right, we'll just ignore the wall and just focus as hard as you can on catching the ball. Fortunately, I was able to just catch the ball as it was going into the wall, and luckily I was able to hold on, and uh, it was a pretty exciting moment. 
That's one of the best plays we've ever seen in right field. Ryan Vogelsong continued his strong postseason work with five and two thirds solid innings. Vogelsong will exit on a crescendo moment. He's getting a standing ovation now and he deserves it. Throw the ball extremely well. The adrenaline of the postseason and, and pitching in this stadium in front of these great fans had something to do with that. Tied at two, the Giants got a fortuitous bounce. Bases loaded, one out, and it's in the dirt. It skips by the catcher of the backstop. Here comes Panic. He scores. To score runs in the way we did, you have to continually put pressure on the defense. And the Giants have gone ahead on a wild pitch. Three to two here in the seventh. It seemed like everybody did something to uh, contribute in that series, and that's what it took. Uh, really to be the, a great team like Washington. Swing a bounding ball to second. Panic's got it. Straightens up and throws it out at first. The Giants have won the division series and let the celebration begin. When we're able to get that last out to clinch a series, the fans are the ones really that, you know, bring that emotion out in us. The Giants are doing a lap around the ballpark. The Giants players try to share this moment with these great fans at AT&T Park. We've seen this movie before, Giants Cardinals to determine who represents the National League in the World Series. In St. Louis, the Giants once again began a series on the road in a rematch of the 2012 NLCS. Game one of the NLCS, Bomb versus Wainwright. I think as a player, as a fan, everybody's excited about um, those two guys going head to head. Madison got the best of the matchup. Adam strikes out swinging. Making the most of an early three to nothing lead. And Cruz strikes out swinging. Bumgarner just blew him away. Bum was, was outstanding for us. Gave us seven plus strong innings. The Giants have taken game one on the road back of their ace. Another great night for Bumgarner on the big stage, the bright lights of October. Although St. Louis won game two, the Giants returned home feeling optimistic. To leave uh, the first two games with the win, we had a lot of confidence going back home. Uh, that, you know, we could get this done. Some call AT&T Park the house of thrills, and game three showed why. It's a 4-4 ball game. The Fox. These guys are warriors, and uh, they never stop fighting. They have that never say die attitude, and you know it's a group of guys that uh, are very determined. That strong-willed approach was evident in Game Four, when after trailing four to one, the Giants battled back. We're gonna line drive left field base hit. Here comes Blanco. He's gonna score, and Buster Posey does it again. And the Giants lead 6-4. It was a rally supported by the San Francisco bullpen. The pitch on the way is a fastball right there. Strike three called. Petit strikes out the side. Once again, Petit had been magnificent with three scoreless innings. Struck him out. All told, the pen froze the Cardinals with six innings of shutout relief. The 1-2 pitch. Strike three called side corner the ball game is over and the Giants have a commanding three games to one lead the chance to win the pennant right here at home tomorrow night game five offered another showdown between Bumgardner and Wainwright and a strikeout he struck out the side Madison threw eight solid innings, but finished trailing three to two. Madison Bumgarner has retired 13 Cardinals in a row. I needed to get through the eighth inning pretty quick and, and get us back in the dugout and uh, give him a chance to do something big. Coming into the game is Michael Morris to hit. Morris, who missed the last month of the season. He's had one hit and three at bats in this league championship series all coming as a pinch hitter. You know, I told myself, can't waste this at bat. You know, let's just try to, uh, you know, make something happen, make some magic happen. Nishak's 1-1 one, one pitch. Swing, and there's a high drive! Down the left field line, hooking 
toward the corner. Goodbye! It's tied out! I hit it well. You know, I hit it right on the barrel. I knew right when I hit it that it was out. And Michael Morris hits the long ball that Bruce Bochy was hoping he'd hit. It was amazing. You know, it gives me goosebumps thinking about it, but uh, my emotions went through the roof, and uh, it, it was hard to, to, to keep my emotions in. One of the biggest pinch hit home runs in franchise postseason history had even the game in three, setting the stage for more drama in the ninth. Two on, one out. A base hit could win this game for the Giants. Walker against Ishikawa. I went up there. You know, knowing the winning run was on second base. I'd never faced him before. I knew he threw hard. I want to look for the first ball. I felt like I'd get my barrel on and just try to hit it hard. Here it comes. Swing, there's a drive. Deep into right field. Right back there. A few steps out of the box. I distinctly remember the crowd getting louder as I was approaching first base and as the ball was approaching the wall. And it was like, oh, man, this could be a home run. This could be great. Goodbye. I didn't know what the rules for players with the walk-off. I really just was trying to get to home plate. It was just one of those moments that I guess I was so high on adrenaline and, and the emotions were just so out of control. Travis Ishikawa, the first in the history of the NLCS to end a series with a home run. It's just special. It's one of those moments that you feel like it's a fairy tale. And to be a part of that fairy tale is sublime it's surreal what a scene here in san francisco this is the best five game series you can ever see there's brian sabian the general manager here with the giants what a run he's been on oh we all get things bottled up but you know to watch things play out not only for morris in that game and now he's got a chance to go to a world series hudson was ultimately going to be able to go it's taken me 16 years to get here I waited my whole career for this and i can't wait the Giants to the World Series in 2010, 2012, 2014. I can't remember a series where, where we were actually picked to win in any of these playoff runs, so pretty special to me. Madison Bumgarner, so deserving of the MVP here tonight. What really makes the difference is this right here, is the heart. And what I have saw this year was guys that cared about each other and guys that you know, that really love to live and breathe the game. The way we play together, we ain't seeing nothing but four more wins. Everyone on this team, this is our lives. We put all of our, our heart, our soul, every, every fiber of our being, and it takes a lot to get here. And we ain't done yet, boys. Saddle the hell up. We're burning it down. Yeah! Yeah! From Kauffman Stadium in Kansas City, it's the 110th World Series, and it's the Giants and the Kansas City Royals. This is the dream of all dreams as a baseball player. Everything you do leads up to, uh, and everything you work for, is, uh, is all preparation to get here. Kauffman Stadium, which has not hosted a World Series, of course, since 1985. Hello, guys. Hey. All right. <laughs> Never seen people so excited to go to work. That's what I'm talking about, baby. <laughs> they feel like us nowadays. They've waited 29 years to get the World Series back here in Kansas City, Missouri. We worked so hard in uh, you know the off season, the spring training, and uh, finally to get to this point. So uh, it's what we've all been waiting for. It's all uh, we've all been grinding to get to it. Have not lost in this postseason. They've gone eight and zero. Oh. With all the talk about the 29 years and the buzz around Kansas City, how about three possible titles in five years? It never gets old, does it? Oh, good. Oh, good. Let's go. When they won it in 2010, and then two years later in 2012, they won the World Series, and two years after that. They are back in the World Series. I pinch myself. The fact that we're back here again 
it's such an unselfish uh, group that uh, never stopped fighting. Of course, we're going to have a lot of confidence in the first game. It's always nice to have a guy like this who uh, starts the first game and can set the tone for you. We want somebody who is young and knows how to win this time of year and knows how to win, especially on the road. There's nobody better than Madison Bumgarner. You know, for whatever reason, the ball's bounced my way on the road more often than it has at home. Obviously, the, the scoreless streak on the road is, uh, is pretty special. 26 and two-thirds consecutive scoreless innings in the postseason on the road. It's an all-time record. It's always fun when you can when you can go on the road and get your team, you know, in the win column. It'll be Madison Bumgarner, the Giants' ace on the mound against uh, the ace of Kansas City, James Shields. We have over 40. Thousand people inside Coffin Stadium going bananas. I don't think anyone on our team is worried about how loud the stadium is going to be. You got to come out and play baseball. Fueled by their hometown fans, the Royals look to continue their postseason success in Game 1. But it didn't take long for the Giants to quell both the crowd and the Royals' momentum. In the air to center, Kane is going to play it on a bounce, and Blanco is on to start the night for the Giants. I know this is a World Series, but uh, it's still a game, and I, and I do just need to get out there and, and, I, and I set the tone for, for my teammates. Panic swings and it's a high drive at left center field, hits it well. Back goes Kane, back near the warning track, and reaches out to make the catch. Tagging Blanco, he's going to test his arm, and he makes it into second base with the slide. Good heads up take of second base by Gregor Blanco, and it sets it up for Buster Posey. Hits it hard, the base hit into left. First and third, one out. And the Giants now with a great opportunity, and here comes Pablo Sandoval. He was the most valuable player in the last World Series in which the Giants participated. That's down into the right field corner. It is big. Rattles around. One run score. Posey all the way around third. They're going to wave them home. Four by and five to me. In time. Two. One nothing Giants. To score first is huge. Now I'm coming up to bat with two outs and you know, Pablo on second. So. This is a, uh, another big opportunity. You want to make it count. Pence has had 11 chances against Shields and has not picked up a hit. He's got me out on a lot of change-ups, a lot of cutters. Just kind of worked my way uh, into a 3-2 count. You're trying to be ready for the heater, but you got to be ready for anything. Pence drives the ball. Kane's on his horse going back, looking up, way back. delivers the long ball on a 3-2 count with two down and he rolled it. And there's a lot of people in this crowd that are turning around wondering what just hit him. You know I was just really fired up. I'm a very emotional guy. You know, I was just happy that I was able to be, you know, be a little bit of a spark. You know, it's a good feeling to, in the first inning, put some runs on the board. Knowing we got Bumgarner and the way he's pitched. Madison had not given up a run in his two previous World Series starts, and he continued that trend in Game 1 by firing two scoreless innings. So down go the Royals, and after two, three to nothing, San Francisco. But the lefty would have to navigate through troubled waters in the third. Crawford moves in, kicks it, as it rolls up his arm. A play Crawford makes all the time. He, he happens to not make it. And then uh, Moustakis had the double. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Out of baby. Let's go. Out of. And Mike Moustakis has a double. Hey, let's get this crowd going, man. So now here we're sitting at second and third, nobody out. I know Bumgarner's mindset. He's going to come for the strikeout. 
but that would be no easy task against a team that was the toughest in the majors to strike out in 2014. You know, I knew that they didn't strike out very often, so I knew, you know, I had to make some really good pitches and make sure that I throw them with conviction. So, in a strikeout situation, Bob Garner comes up big. That was a big momentum shifter for us. Uh, you know, it could have went either way at that point. Bob Gardner's pitch is a ground ball to second base. Panic's got it, and Bob Gardner is out of the inning. That's why you see him having the success he does. He picked us up. It definitely makes you, you know, fired up coming in to go hit and score some more runs, that's for sure. And that's exactly what the Giants did in the next half inning, tacking two more runs on the board. Big damage is being done here in the fourth. And a five-run lead now for Madison Bumgarner. That makes it easy on you, or easier when your team uh, is able to, to run out there and, and get five runs. And that's five shutout innings put up by Madison Bumgarner. Bumgarner has retired 12 of the last 13. Giants lead 5-0 at the end of six. You're not afraid to go out there and attack guys, and you're not afraid to, to make a mistake and leave one over the middle. Swinging a fly ball deep into left field. Back goes Perez. It is gone. Salvador Perez homers into the Royals' bullpen. Bumgardner's record-setting postseason scoreless streak of 32 and two-thirds innings on the road was finally over. And after seven innings of three-hit ball, so was his night. But Madison was masterful, the architect behind the Giants' pivotal victory, running his career fall classic record to 3-0. and oh. Giants have won game one as they did in 2012 over the Tigers, as they did in 2010. To be able to get started on a good good note and uh, get your team to, to a 1 0 advantage is big. chances and we just got to keep going out stay focused and concentrate on the, the one game ahead of us. Here at Kauffman Stadium in Kansas City it's the Giants and the Royals game two of this 2014 World Series. To know that they had an eight game winning streak and now they're getting their first taste of losing you know hopefully it's uh it's gonna it's gonna mean something going into today, I think. Some extra urgency for the Royals trying to avoid losing both games before heading to San Francisco. Now the question is, how will the Giants do in games that Bumgarner does not start? Tonight, Jake Peavy will make his third postseason appearance. There's there's no question Peavy's gonna come out and be ready. He obviously has, has been here before and knows what it takes to, to get the job done. He's up against a flamethrower. Maybe the hardest throwing starter in all of Major League Baseball, young Jordano Ventura, 23 years old. Ventura's velocity would test the Giants' bats. So he's 97, he's just warming up. But they could approach him with the mindset that the harder he threw, the harder they'd hit. Eighth pitch of this at bat, and it'll be ripped to right field, going back towards the corner. That is way back. And goodbye, home run. A leadoff home run for Gregor Blanco. What a great start for Blanco and the Giants. Blanco had given the Giants a 1 0 lead. All right, all right. But the resilient Royals look to answer right back. We can do that. Game two wasn't as sharp as I would like to early. The 3 2 pitch. Swing the line drive in the left center field on the run. Ishikawa dives and can't get it. It hits off his glove. It's backed up by Blanco. Here comes a throw, and he slides it safe. You're never too far ahead of the Royals. So when you're up on them, you don't ever want to give in. Two on for Butler. The 
the moment for Kansas City he could be right now. Important moment so early here in this one. That ball's going to go into left field for a base hit. What a ball out of here. The way the moment is a throw by Ishikawa. Not in time. Big hit. Butler gets the RBI in the ball game. It's tied at one. Kansas City continued its attack in the second. It's going to be a stand-up double for Infante. As Peavy fell victim to a pair of doubles. So now the Royals, with that lead-off double, are going to get a chance to get a lead. I'll see that's Escobar now. They've got a chance for another run right here. Escobar down the line. It is a fair ball. Kansas City's going to take the lead. Infante scores. Escobar to second, a double. This is more like we're used to in the postseason 2014. It remained that way into the fourth when Pablo Sandoval, the 2012 World Series MVP, delivered another most valuable hit. Fly ball into center. Kane is back. And he can't make the catch. Sandoval will dig for second and hold there. Even one ball, one strike. Bell rips one past Hosmer into right field base in. Sandoval scores. The Giants have tied the game. 2-2 Two -two tie, bottom of the sixth inning. Jake Peavy has retired 10 straight. We gave up a couple early. Was able to find our mechanics and get us to the sixth there. You know, unfortunately, uh, things kind of unraveled. That's a Bermuda triangle base hit. Billy Butler coming up against Gene Munchie. Nice try. Swinging a liner in the left field, a base hit. Kansas City leads it by one. And it's three to two. And here comes the rookie right-hander, Hunter Strickland. They're chatting Salvi for Perez. And he is delivered into the game. The two-run double, and the Royals lead 5-2. Omar Infante, the batter. He kind of punches in the mouth there. The Giants would fall, but the team could take solace in splitting the first two. The Giants did get what they set out to do, and that is home field advantage the rest of the series, and it is now a five-game series as they head back to San Francisco. Welcome to AT&T Park in San Francisco. It is Game 3 of the World Series, the Royals and the San Francisco Giants. With the series now on familiar turf, the Giants were feeling right at home. Well, I just want to make sure I'm in the right spot. Yeah, you Bobby, let, let, Bobby, you let them play the yeah. heater. Hey, hey, let me know when they get here. <laughs> Very serious bunch in this group. Well, I mean, we got Bell Crow. I'm just trying to, just trying to take notes. So now here we are in a National League city. That means a number of changes for the Royals with that starting lineup. Y'all get ready for tonight? First start in the World Series? <laughs> I'm pumped about that. With Jeremy Guthrie, who is a fly ball pitcher, with Dyson, Kane, and Gordon in the outfield, they just like having their best defense. Now we go. The Royals were unfazed, having won all four of their postseason road games. But the Giants had won nine of their last ten at home. Something had to give. The Giants will go with the veteran right-hander, Jim Hudson, in his 16th season. Tonight, he will do something that he has never done, that is, start a World Series game. Optimistic Giants fans extended a warm welcome to their team. But Tim Hudson, making his first ever fall classic start, was greeted rudely in the top of the first. Whacked down the line in left field. That's over into the corner. Chased down and into 
second base goes Escobar with a double. Finally got my chance to pitch in the World Series, and you would think that Escobar would have eased me into it a little bit, but you know, he gave me a little bit of an ambush swing right there, first pitch of the game, and hit a double. That's not exactly how I wanted my World Series experience to get started, so it kind of set the tone for me what I was going to have to deal with that game. Although Escobar did end up scoring, Hudson settled in and kept the Royals scoreless for the next four. He was terrific, threw a lot of strikes, was ahead of a lot of hitters. Honey did everything to keep us in that ball game. Swing and a miss out in front of a changeup. Inning is over. They go in order. It wasn't until the top of the sixth that the Royals got to Hudson again, with one man on. Escobar will come all the way around and score. It's two nothing. Sixth inning once again. It's really hard for these starting pitchers to get through a lineup a third time. It's the third time around. Hitters just get another look. A couple of guys get a hit here and there in a close ball game, and it just kind of got away from us there. Hudson, first World Series start, and he pitched well here tonight. We'll hear the appreciation on his way off the field. Kansas City went on to take a three to nothing lead in the sixth, but the Giants struck back in the bottom half, with Michael Morse driving in their first run. And the Giants have the possible tying runs both in scoring position now. And here comes Buster. Now he faces the hard throwing right hander, Herrera. That'll get one run. Infante stays down. One run game, RBI ground out for Posey. Scoring any runs against the Royals' stellar bullpen was a victory. And in the bottom of the seventh, with the tying run on, Brandon Crawford found out just how hard it was against the rookie, Brandon Finnegan. And what a job by the kid. We are at the end of seven, with the Royals still leading three to two. In the eighth, Wade Davis threw another scoreless frame, setting the stage for closer Greg Holland. Holland has it, feeds Hosmer, and the Royals win the game. Well, you know, obviously we wish we would have won the ball game. But everybody's still confident. You know, we have a lot of guys that have been on this stage before and they understand what it takes to win. And we're going to come out tomorrow and give it our best shot. And the Giants may well feel now that each of the next two games are must wins. We've had our backs against the wall before, and we've overcome it. We understand a lot of tough baseball to be played, and there's a lot of things that we feel can go our way here and try to even this thing up, if not take it. Kansas City wins 3-2, to two, and they take a 2-1 to one lead in the World Series. I just thought it was good pitching, and they just happened to, uh, you know, they got more, one more big hit there than we were able to. We'll just try to come out tomorrow and play good baseball and try to even it up. And welcome, everybody. This is AT&T Park in San Francisco. Game four of the 2014 World Series between the Kansas City Royals and the San Francisco Giants. Few overcast clouds going by, but very comfortable for a baseball game here for game four. What's good, fellas? How you doing today? Ready to go to work, baby. Royals have the lead, two games to one in the series with the victory last night by a score of three to two. Do we call it the big three or the big four? I mean, last night, the bullpen lights out again for Kansas City. You have guys like that, it shortens the game, and that's their way of doing things, and uh, it's, it's worked for them in the World Series, too. The Royals now lead the series two games to one, entering this game with Ryan Vogelsong on the mound for the Giants and Jason Vargas on the mound for the Royals. Vogelsong will get the start. The Giants have won every game that he has ever started in postseason play. They're 6 0, including 2 0 this year. The problem for Vogelsong, he has struggled as of late. His last win was in August. Big topic of conversation during the day was whether or not Bruce Bochy should go to Madison Bumgarner, start him on short rest. The answer, as it turns out, is no. It was something we definitely talked about, but we felt like Vogelson, the way he's pitched in the postseason, the big games he's pitched for this team, you just don't skip a guy like that unless you definitely have to, and we felt like we didn't have to at this point. It's two games to one. There's a lot of baseball left to play, but I think that's why we're not panicking. I think we understand there's a lot of things uh, that we feel can go our way here and, and try to even this thing up. But if tonight's game is anything like last night's game, we're in for a fun night. Early on, Vogel.
Bible song appeared to have righted his ship. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. That's exactly what Vogelsong needed to do. He needed to put an early zero up, and he did. And that'll give his team some big-time momentum. And the Giants used a walk, a wild pitch, and a steal in the bottom of the first to help manufacture an early lead. If the Giants expect to do anything in this postseason right now, they have got to keep their fans on their feet, and they're only going to do it by taking a lead. Runner on at second base, one down. Runner is going. 0-2 pitch taken low, throw down, and safe. Blanco steals third. And I take my chance and I came out good. I said to myself, we got to start doing something to produce runs. If I get in third, all he need to do is hit a ground ball in the seat. Under Pence, first and third. There it is, and a swing at a ground ball to third, to second one, to first, not in time, and the run will come in to score. And the speed of Pence to beat it out for a fielder's choice gives the Giants the lead. The excitement of this one starts real early. But the euphoria in the ballpark was short-lived as the Royals answered in the third with two outs and runners on the corners. Here's a one out. Off the mound. for the game is tied. Not a real difficult play, but the one that he hit there was almost in the perfect Bermuda Triangle place where it has to pretty much go really perfect with timing to have a play at first base. Three players came together and Vogelsong did not get his foot on the base. Vogelsong's delivery and that's going to be an enormous base hit. It will score Kane. It will score Hosmer. Another two out, two RBI hit for Kansas City. And they are on top three to one. And a 3-1 pitch and a swing and a ball line towards center field. Charging Blanco, it drops in front of him. And in to score on the play is Moustakis. It is four to one Royals, and Bruce Bochy's already made the call and is on his way to the mound. I really thought Bogusong was throwing the ball well, and he was making some good pitches. We we just had trouble getting that last out for him. And it'll be Gene Machi out of the Giants bullpen to try and put an end to a Royals four-run third inning. And the pitch is strike three called during the inning. Final. That was a huge out. We had to get off the field. You can't let those uh, innings continue. And when guys were in the dugout talking about, hey, we're going to come back now. We got a chance. That was a big out to get. It's never fun to be down 4-1 in a World Series game, but the experience that we've had in past postseason games and being able to come back, we knew that the game was definitely not over. Trailing in both the game and the series, the Giants needed some urgent relief, and they had the perfect man for the job. Here we go to the fourth inning, and Yusmero Petit comes in to pitch. Throughout the postseason, Petit was the young son hero uh, for us with the job he did uh, in the bullpen. The thing I like about him is he gives the Giants a chance. You want to keep that game as close as possible and keep the momentum going on your side. 0-2. Kane swings and misses strike three. The curveball got it. The Giants are feeling a little bit better about things right now. Shut down inning. They absolutely had to have him hold the line and indeed he did. You can't overestimate how important these outs are here and keeping the score where it is. You know when you play the Royals, it's a race to the sixth inning. They are fired up now in San Francisco. Petit gave us exactly what we needed. Uh, he calmed things down, gave us three innings of solid work, and, get, and allowed the team to come back. Bottom of the fifth inning in San Francisco with the Royals leading the Giants 4 to 2. Infield back, runner at third, one out. The Giants trying to keep chipping away. They got one last inning to make it 4 to 2, and they've got a great opportunity to do more damage here in the bottom of the fifth. But they would have to do so against the Royals' bullpen a task that had proved daunting up till now. Realize that the Giants are at the combined 5 for 45 against the entire Kansas City bullpen in this World Series. So here's Hunter Pence. Coming up to this at bat, if I can get anything, you know, up the middle or in the air, we got a good chance of getting this run in. A 2-2 two -two count on the always dangerous Hunter Pence as Fraser gathers in the side. He happened to make actually a really good pitch up and in. The pitch. Swing of the ground ball toward the middle. And I was able to get it up the middle where the infield wasn't able to get to. In the center field. That's a base hit. Coming in to score is Panic, and it's a one-run game. You know, I'm sure it was pretty frustrating for him because, you know, it wasn't hit the best, but it was hitting the right spot at the right time. You saw the reaction of Fraser. He just threw a ground ball he thought was an out. It's a base hit. Two batters later, rookie Juan Perez came up with the bases loaded and one out 
in search of his first postseason RBI. The fastball swung on into shallow center. Dyson racing in, makes the catch. Tagging in third and scoring his pitch. And the sack fly ties the game at four. Dyson made a heck of a play right there, but at the same time, it was big to get back tied 4 4. The crowd gets back into it. The energy level of the building has gone way up. And they were extremely loud. I mean, it's just deafening when they get that loud. And I think it definitely worked in our favor. Inspired by the raucous crowd, the Giants would take the lead in the sixth, as their all time postseason hits leader came up in a big spot. So now it's up to Pablo Sandoval. The bases are loaded with two outs. Switch hitter. Sandoval has struggled from this side of the plate this year. Hit 199 against left hand. I just tell myself, you know, try to don't try to too much. Get a good pitch to hit. Concentrate to the middle of the field. Swing it up, base hit into center field. One run is home. Throw to the plate is cut. Two runs are home. And the Giants have taken a 6-4 to four lead. And the Panda comes through again. Pablo has this way, you know, when, when the big moment comes, he finds a way to get it done. And, I mean, he put one of the most beautiful right-hand swings you'll ever see. It really changed the game and changed the whole series with that at bat. One inning later, the Giants kept scoring. And it's 11 to 4. And the route is on now here at AT&T Park. Swing and a miss. He got him and the inning is over. And the Giants' bullpen made certain that the seven-run lead remained intact. And a swing and a bouncer back to the mound. Strickland has it on the first and the Giants win. With 10 unanswered runs, San Francisco had turned a dire situation into a decisive victory, reclaiming momentum in the series. They overcome an early 4-1 deficit and win going away. Yeah, they win a fight for that. This World Series is tied up again, two games to two games. It's always good to even the score. We have to forget about today. Now, we want it. We're happy. It's 2-2. Two -two, but tomorrow's a new day. We have to focus on tomorrow. And guess what? The most important thing, they will have their ace, Madison Bumgarner, taking the hill tomorrow night in Game 5 on full rest. The weather is magnificent. It is a perfect day for the fifth game of the 2014 World Series. The series tied at two games apiece. Tonight, the question of who will be leading the World Series going into that sixth game will be decided. <laughs> the Giants certainly have to like their chances with their ace left-hander, Madison Bumgarner. <laughs> yeah, you know, we're very confident. You know, we got Bum on the mound. He's been great for us all postseason and in the past. Stellar yet again in the World Series. Even though he finally, for the first time in three World Series starts, allowed a run in Kansas City. You know, I think we feel real confident with Bum being on the mound, but at the same time, I think they can say the same about their guy. James Shields, the veteran right-hander of the Royals, who was not so good in that first World Series game. He hasn't had the, the greatest postseason yet, but... Let's do this. Shields goes out there every day, whether it's, you know, a good start or a bad start. The, the previous one is the same guy every time, so we believe in him. Yeah. There is no better starting pitcher in the game today in October than the guy that's getting the ball tonight for the San Francisco Giants. Ten million people in this country that don't think we can beat this guy. It's where I like it. He's made three career World Series starts. He is 3 0 with an ERA of 0 41. Anytime Bum takes the mound in a postseason game, we're going to be confident we can get a win. It's game five of the World Series next. I got to get up here. I got to get here where I can yell. Come on, man. Bear down here. That first guy. Come on. Basketball is up there hacking, and he gets under it. Dishy Cowell coming in. One pitch, wow. And the one-two pitch. Curveball and a swing and a miss. And the inning is over. Yeah. 
to the bottom of the first here in San Francisco. No score in game five. Yeah, I felt pretty good. You know, command was there. Fastball looked, looked like it had good life on it. Breaking balls were fairly sharp. I'm going to deliver. Swing and a miss. He struck him out with a curveball. Yeah. The most important thing, location was there. Make good pitches. Went right back to that slider or the cutter and just started it on the inner half and just swept it across the plate. Felt like we were able to keep a good tempo going and slow the game down and make it at our own pace. 0-2 pitch. Bang and a miss. He struck it out on a high fastball. And Bumgarner with three consecutive strikeouts. Let's go. Out of way. Lately, Madison hadn't needed much in the way of run support. And the Giants played some small ball in the second to provide it. The ground ball is short, and it gets under the glove of Escobar. As a pitcher, you can't really draw it up any better than that. Slider just off. The ball is almost bouncing. That's an outstanding pitch right there. Now hitting over 500 in this series with two strikes. It's Hunter Benson. He's on to start the inning. Now they're going to a shift for Brandon Bell, the left-handed hitter. And Bell bunts it up the third base side. Racing in, Escobar picks it up, throws, safe! Yeah, he's safe! He punted it very nicely, and despite the best efforts of Escobar, Brandon Belt beats it out. Is this a column two on nobody out? Come on, he's put us on the board. The pitch, and a swing and a fly ball to center field. Dyson back near the warning track, makes the catch, and tags up. Both runners tag it up, and they're both going to move up. Great job, he's got a win, nice job. No score, bottom of the second, but a threat here for the Giants. So now Brandon Crawford, who has hit in each of the first four games. Swung on and missed. Another good change up there from Shields, and it's two and two. When I got down to two strikes and, and I saw the infield back, all I was trying to do was make contact, touch the ball somehow. Now change up, ground to the second. Pence breaks for the plate. He's going to score. Yeah! Giants lead one to nothing. You couldn't strike out. You had to put it to play. Great A.B. What in the back, Zion? What in the back? Then in the fourth, the Giants look to clutch Crawford once again. Two on, two out for Brandon Crawford. It's going to be tough scoring Pablo, but still turn the lineup over for the fifth. It'll be huge. It was kind of the same situation. I was just trying to make contact and, and hope that something good would happen. Down two strikes again, and he made another really good pitch. So I was just trying to touch it. And a swing and a little blooper. Shallow center field. It falls base hit. And then it kicks off of Dyson. And Sandoval will come in to score. Yeah! Yeah! You better look at me, son, and give me some love. God, it makes me so excited. And the Giants now lead two to nothing. To give Bum a two-run lead, it might as well be a, a ten-run lead when, when he's on the mound. When number 40 is on the mound for the Giants, two runs almost seems insurmountable. He is in control, in charge. Well, when you have a lead, you know, it makes it, you know, it takes a little pressure off of you. You can attack guys a little more. A strikeout, that's number six on the night. You know, just going out there and keeping ahead of guys and keep making pitches. Curveball struck him out swinging. That is 10 in a row. Retired by Baumgart. His dominance continues. Let's go. Run away. Come on. Keep going. And that's really the mindset of the whole game is just uh, attack the strike zone. Swing and a miss. Left side. Sandoval lays back. Long throw. Got it. Seven shot out innings. He had his best stuff I've seen, you know, working both sides of the plate, locating in and away, had a good curveball, and when guys got that kind of stuff, it's tough. Curveball, strike three, call, and it absolutely foul locked Billy Butler. Eight shutout innings for Madison Bumgarner. And there's eight of them, don't you quit on me now. Come the eighth, the Giants sought to give the race a bit of insurance. Two on, one out for the Giants. The batter will be Juan Perez. Juan approached the plate with a heavy heart, having learned during the game that his close friend, Cardinals outfielder Oscar Tavares, had died in a car accident. I went to check my phone, and the first thing I opened was a picture of him laying in, in you know, one of those uh, beds in the hospital. You have a close friend like that, it can hit your heart. Casilla and Arias came over, I was crying. And uh, they would tell him, you know, to be strong. We got to win this game and stay focused. 
Knowing how tough that was for me, I could only imagine what it was like for Juan. And some things in life are just hard to explain, and that was one of those moments where I think the stars were aligned for Juan to have a big at bat there. Watch this, he's gonna do it for him right here. I didn't know that, man. He's gonna do it for him right here. High drive, deep in the center. Kane going way back, still going back. It's off the top of the wall. Sandoval racing home. Pence right behind him. They both score. The throw gets away. And Juan Perez goes to third. And it's four to nothing, Giants. When I slide a throw, Oscar came up back to my mind and he said to myself, you know, that's for you, brother. Juan Perez crushing one on a moment for Juan Perez. I was so happy for him hitting that double. Coming from the bench, it's not easy and, uh, and uh, it's, it's unbelievable. Crawford then brought Perez home with his third RBI of the night. That ball might drop. It is down. In to score, Perez. 5 nothing Giants. Love you, Bubba. When Mad Bum took the mound in the ninth, the mad love of the entire city washed over him. I did hear it. It was definitely pretty cool. I may have took a little extra time in between pitches just to, to listen to it a little longer. There really is no way you can't appreciate what Madison Bumgarner is doing. Appreciate greatness when it's upon you. Bumgarner delivers. He got a ground ball to third. Pablo picks it up and throws it out. Another masterpiece. It's impressive right there. And that's the shutout for Bumgarner. It was big for us to get a win. Now we're up 3-2 instead of down 3-2, so hopefully we can keep it going. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Out of the way. And the Giants are one win away from their third World Series championship in five years. But to do it, they're going to have to do it in Kansas City. The San Francisco Giants have a chance to clinch their third World Series over their last five years. They know what to do this time of year and how to put a team away. Our clubhouse does a pretty good job of staying focused and taking one game at a time. So pre-game today, I don't think we'll be be thinking too much about what this game means. However, for Kansas City, if you think they're intimidated by the position they're in, you're wrong. The lives are on the line pretty much, uh, so it's going to be fun. I'm sure, it's going to be an electric atmosphere, and we're looking forward to it. The starter for Kansas City, the very young right-hander, Jordano Ventura, we saw him in game two, and he pitched well. And like fellow Dominican Juan Perez, Ventura was also dealing with the loss of Oscar Tavares. Giordano will pitch tonight to honor the memory of his close friend, the late Oscar Tavares. It's a must win for Kansas City. It's an urgent game for the Giants. A much shorter leash on Jake Peavy than what we saw in game two. Hopefully Jake's on top of this game and gets us somewhat deep in the game. but. You know, we have them covered because of everybody being available. Let go, baby. Let go, baby. Turn up. Turn up. Let's go. This place is rocking, packed in royal blue. The Giants in Kansas City trying to win the World Series. Whenever you're talking about closing out a series, you're talking about ending a team's season. So the other team is going to be coming at you furiously. It's possible that ferocity helps explain a recent trend in series history one in which a staggering eight of the last 10 teams to return home down three games to two have won the series. So with history on their side, the Royals set out to extend that trend. It'll be Alex Gordon here in the second inning against Jake Peavy. Let's go, A.G. Off the end of the bat might drop. And that's going to drop in there. Base hit. The blue single to center for Gordon. And here comes Salvi Perez. A liner over the head of Panic into right center, a base hit. Going first to third is Gordon with nobody out. Now Moustakis. Brown ball, past the diving belt. Let's go, Moose! Let's go! In the score is Gordon. Perez is going to be held at third on an RBI double by Moose.
Moustakis. Yeah! And the Royals have a one to nothing lead. If you go back through that horrendous second inning, so many freak things happen. Reach for him, bounce loaded to first, in the field of his belt, he's got it. Now he races over after the runner, and he misses it. Belt was looking at third, Perez stayed put, bases loaded. Not sitting here saying I, I pitched my best game by any means, but I did execute a lot of what I was trying to do, and the ball just bounced the other way. That's the part that really hurts. A little slow bouncer that should have been an out, should have been two down. Now the base is loaded, one out. There he goes in the left field, and they stand. One run scores, that's all. Two nothing, Kansas City. And that's it for Jake Peavy. I certainly understand Boach is thinking, if it was a regular season game, you get to you get to stay in there and, and win or lose it yourself. In the postseason, there's zero margin for error. Bochi tried to stop the bleeding with Petit, who up to this point had been sensational. But for a Royals team that excelled at putting the ball in play, everything was dropping in game six. Off the fish, a bloop in the shallow center. That's going to fall. Base hit. Moustakas scores. And here comes Escobar. He scores. And now it is a big inning. It was just their night. Johnson over the head of Hawthorne. It is six to nothing. And to the gap in right center. Seven to nothing. Nine men have batted in the inning. And eight of them have had hits. Seven runs in the inning. The most that a Kansas City Royals team has ever scored in any postseason game. Dude, we've been hit for about 30 minutes, huh? Hey, Ace might want to throw. <laughs> Ace, as in Ace Ventura, who continued to pitch that way even after the long half inning. Here is Ventura. Stares down Sandoval as he takes a hit away. Back to the mound. Ooh. In the show me state, a little show me. Oh, okay. Ventura finishes seven. He was fantastic. This is the second time now where he has kept the Giants quiet. A very special talent. Nobody has left this ballpark. They want to see the period at the end of this game six to officially send us to game seven tomorrow night. Swing and a miss. Come out. All Royals. 10 to nothing. Woo! Game seven tomorrow night. That's how it is when you're a star. Yeah, tomorrow's the fresh start of a new day. It's a bad beat. When you get a bad beat, you kind of forget about it. I think a lot of people think that, well, they just got ripped. They're dead. Well, it doesn't work that way on the professional level. Giants have Madison Bumgarner looking for tomorrow night. He will not start the game tomorrow, but he will be available out of the bullpen. We got some drama tomorrow. Mm -hmm. everyone and welcome to Kauffman Stadium. It is time for Game 7 of the 2014 World Series. Bien amigos televidentes, aquí estamos en Kansas City. Marcus, el septième match de la Serie Mondiale. Le San Francisco Giants tie Kansas City Royals. Sí, no tiene de la adición de la Giants. This is what it's all about. A must-win game for both teams. It is a, a game that I think we all have at some time dreamt about. Yeah, it does not get any better than this. When I was a young kid, hitting rocks in my backyard, you never one time thought, okay, two outs, bases loaded, ninth inning, game five of the World Series. It's always game seven of the World Series. There is no bigger moment. There is no bigger stage, and you don't see them a lot. Only the second time over the last 12 years baseball has had a World Series game number seven. The last nine times there was a game seven in a World Series, the home team won. It's been an incredibly unpredictable World Series with the momentum shifting back and forth. The experts are saying the momentum had swung. Hey, now. We're in their house. The great thing uh, about this group uh, that I have is they don't care about the odds. We hit, you hit, you hit. We score, we score, we score. Yeah, yeah. I don't think momentum matters right now. I think that this is game seven. Both teams have their backs against the wall. Excited to be in the last game of the season, huh? There's no try to win today, and if not, we win tomorrow. There's no tomorrow. We got a tomorrow. Sorry. I'll get some work in tomorrow. Now, when you got a game seven, of course, it's all hands on deck. Everybody's available. You truly are going to see who the best team is because everyone's using every weapon they have. And one of the big questions everybody wants to know is 
will Madison Bumgarner pitch in this game? The Giants will have Madison Bumgarner available coming out of the bullpen if necessary. When I grow up, I want to be you. Chris Overhagen, great job, my man. I love it. I love watching you pitch, buddy. Keep it going, buddy. I believe he will pitch in this game. I think he'll be available for as much as one to three innings. We're already talking about the bullpen. The game hasn't even started, <laughs> but that's because of these two starters, a rematch of game three, Jeremy Guthrie and Tim Hudson. Going to the park, I remember talking to my wife, and I was just like, you know, can you believe I'm pitching game seven of the World Series? Tim Hudson, who has waited his whole career for a platform like this. So here I am, 39 years old, you know, getting ready to, to make the biggest start of my career. The oldest game seven starter in Major League history. A 39-year-old against a 35-year-old. Jeremy Guthrie in the midst of what I think is the best stretch in his career. One thing is for certain, the two starters may not be around all that long. There's going to be so much intrigue and looks into that bullpen. We're going to see history tonight. Tonight, win or lose, the postseason run comes to an end. It's game seven. Winner, take all. The Giants had won their last seven games when facing elimination, outscoring their opponents 44 to nine. In the top of the second, the middle of their lineup looked to add to that margin. And that hit him. That ball ran up and in and just grazed his right elbow. And down to first he goes. Pablo, he got hit by the pitch, and uh, you know I found a way to, to find a hole uh, with two strikes. Ground ball into left field, a base hit. Another base hit for Hunter Pence. And, you know, really set the tone to get belt up. Got that one. That's a base hit into right field. And the Giants have loaded the bases with nobody out. At that point, it's an opportunity to do damage. And now the chance for the DH, Michael Force. I knew what they were going to try to do was, you know, hit, me, hit into a ground ball, so they were going to try to pitch me low. I just waited for a good pitch to hit and got one over the plate. Line to right field. Aoki going back, reaches up and makes the catch. Tagging at third and scoring. Sandoval tagging at second and advancing to third. Pence. Morris gets it done, and the Giants lead it one to nothing. Not only scoring the run, but getting Pence to third base. Good chance here for Crawford. It's a situation you want to come up to. You know, you, you're trying to get runs on the board early. A high fly ball to left center field. This will be deep enough. Kane the catch for the second down. Scoring Pence. Another sack fly. Those are the little things that, you know, you work on every day in BP that you're ready for. And it's a 2 nothing ball game on two sack flies. We were definitely riding high after getting those two runs. In game seven, to get a two-run lead, it's a big deal, especially on the road. But the visiting Giants have struck first. Scoring two as early as we did is big, but it was taken away very quickly when they scored two themselves in the bottom half of the inning. Hit hard into the gap. It's going to split the D all the way to the wall. Butler lumbering around third, heading home. Not in time. Two to one. And they answered the bell. They came out swinging it, and they put it right back on us. In the air to center. Marco the catch. Here comes Gordon. And that was the feeling of the whole series. When we got down the game in the series, we came back fighting. When they got down, they came out. The game is now tied at two, and Bruce Bochy is on his way to the mound. Tim Hudson will not even last two full innings. You know, obviously, I would have loved to have gone deeper into that game, but I understand that, you know, there's no tomorrow. And he gives way to Jeremy Anfield. Such a big late inning weapon for Bruce Bochy, but here he is in the second inning. I don't think I've even seen inning two uh, since I was a starter, like 2005 or something. But I was ready, and it was because of what Bochy uh, prepared me for before the game even started. Before the game, we talked about it and told uh, Jeremy, be ready, uh, you're the first guy up if we had any trouble. And uh, Jeremy did a great job. Ground ball, Baltimore chops, going to go to the middle, tough play right on the bag, and got him! And ends the inning. So, we go to the third. The Giants 2, Kansas City 2. In the bottom of the third, Affelt allowed a leadoff single to Lorenzo Cain, and the Royals had the makings of a rally, one quickly snuffed out by the Giants' defense. After Cain got on, you know, to lead off the inning with nobody out, uh, Hosmer hit a nice shot up the middle. Here's one up the middle. Right off the bat, I told myself to try to knock it down, you know, hopefully get one. Panic, what a play! You know, once I caught the ball, uh, I couldn't really get my bare hand to it, so instincts told me just to get rid of it with the glove. Joe did the hard part. He got to the ball. I mean, that, that ball was hit pretty hard. It was a fast infield, and just to get to it was a great play, but then uh, to get it out of his glove that quick and, and get it to me, it was awesome. Gets one, and saves it first. Unbelievable diving play by Joe Panic. I had 
the time you're thinking, all right, that's good, we got one out. And then obviously with the replay overturning it, it was even a bigger call is overturned. Successful challenge by Bruce Bochy. First overturned call on the field of play in World Series history. And that could be a game changer here. It started off looking promising for the Royals. It ends up working out in the Giants' favor at the end of three. In the top of the fourth, it was the Kansas City defense that was challenged, courtesy of leadoff hitter Pablo Sandoval. 2-1. Sandoval chops one off the plate toward the middle. Farner was right. Infante barehand slips, throws, not in time. And Sandoval's got an infield single. That base hit got the bullpen active. It's the hard throwing right hander, Kelvin Herrera. Well, now Hunter Pence. There's no more confident hitter in either lineup right now than this guy. That's in the air to center. This ball is down for another hit. And the Giants are back in business here in the fourth inning. At this point, with no one out and runs on first and second, the most important thing is for Pablo to get the third. And Bell. It looked like he crushed it. So swing it a fly ball to left field. Going back to Gordon. Still backpedaling. Reaches up, makes the catch. This is one of those opportunities where you have to take a little risk. And uh, I wasn't sure what, what Pablo was thinking. So I got in his ear and I was like, you got to go for it. You got to go for it. I was just screaming. Oh, Sandoval tagging at second. The only thing that I know was Hunter almost next to me. Take a risk, take a risk, go for it, go for it, gentlemen. And he is in there, aggressive base running by Sandoval. Pablo and Hunter, if they don't do what they did this postseason, uh, we don't win this thing. And Michael Morse, the batter. Guthrie was in a jam, and I saw Herrera warming up. When I got up to the plate, he came in the game. Guthrie out, Herrera in. You know, the guy has an outstanding three-digit fastball. I got to two strikes. Good red by Morris with strike two. He was locked in in the big moments this postseason, and um, he was able to, with two strikes, shoot one out where they weren't standing. Broken back base hit into right. One run scores. Pence will go to third. And Michael Morse delivers his second RBI of the game and his fourth of the World Series. And the Giants are back ahead three to two. And it's now a battle of the bullpens already. Eyes keep darting down to the bullpen for the Giants. And that name that lurks over this game seven, Madison Bumgarner. Madison and I talked before the game. They said, hey, they said they're probably going to go to me. If we have a lead, what do you think i got to be ready for? And I said, Madison, I've got to do whatever i got to do to get the ball to you. Jeremy Affeld pitches a scoreless fourth inning. So I don't know how many innings that is, but I think we're just trying to get the ball to you by the fifth inning. Bunk Garner is up. So we play in the fifth inning now. I talked to Madison, and uh, he had a good idea when he would pitch uh, in game seven, and he made himself available. In fact, uh, game six, he, he wanted to go out to the bullpen and help us out if needed, but uh, I said, no, 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 we'll save you for game seven. According to Bruce Bochy, if he gets up, he's coming in the game. Got the call and, and had about a half inning to, to get ready. A little short for me, but, you know, game seven of the World Series, you don't have too much of a problem getting loose. When Bum comes into the game, we feel like we're in a really good spot right now. And you can almost sense it in the crowd that they're thinking, uh-oh, <laughs> here comes this guy again. Baumgartner is going to come out of the bullpen for the Giants. You hear the boos as he's announced. The first inning was a little shaky. Infante, he got a base hit to right. But after that, we kind of settled in. I think once he got through the fifth, struck him out swinging. I was really comfortable with him. You could see his stuff uh, pick up. He got on a roll and was just as sharp and dominant as he was in game five. Bumgarner with a 12 pitch, 10 strike, bottom of the sixth inning. So the sixth, seventh inning, I said, I'm going to run with this horse and let him go. Curveball swung on and missed. Breaking balls were sharp. Fastball had some good life on it. So I felt really good. He is dealing. You know, I thought maybe, hey, if he can get us just through the seventh. Three up, three down, nine pitches, end of seven. Next thing you know, he's pitching into eighth. And it's, oh, if he can just get us through the eighth. Ends the eighth. Four shutout innings for Madison Bumgarner. I really started staying away from him. I didn't want him to tell me he was starting to get tired. The decision, by the way, has been made. Bumgarner's going back out there. And Madison Bumgarner is back out to try to nail down the last three outs. When I knew I was going to get a chance to go out there, I thought, 
That's pretty special. Not every day you get a chance to do something like that. The fans have not given up hope here in Kansas City in spite of the overwhelming dominance of Bumgarner in this series. There really isn't a way to describe what Madison was this series. To come off of two days rest and, and come out and pitch five innings, it's unheard of. One away! And he's only 25 years old. I mean, this guy is a kid. If you didn't know already, you know we're watching something special. What we saw was Hall of Fame type stuff. I don't know if you'll ever see it again. We were all really lucky that we got to watch it, and I, I know I feel fortunate that I was there to catch it. Popped up right side. Will it stay in play? It does. Two out. He is gunning for a five-inning save. What he was able to do is one of the great performances in postseason history. The first man ever to pitch 50 innings in a single postseason, Bumgarner's World Series ERA was a microscopic 0.25 the lowest ever. He's thrown four and two-thirds shutout innings in relief here in game seven. And Bumgarner and the Giants are one out away. It's up to Alex Gordon. Here's the 0-1. When he hit the ball, I had run out to Bum thinking we're about to you know, celebrate a World Series. That's in the air to left center. And I think Gregor got caught a little bit in between. That ball is down. And it gets by Lago. The ball got by. At first, you know, I didn't think nothing of it. Gordon on his way to second base. And I'm thinking, okay, you know, he'll be on second, worst case, third. <laughs> and then it got kicked around a little bit. A mistake in the outfield. Gordon is going to take the third. And Gordon, he can run, so I'm wondering if they're going to send him. Would they dare wave him home? No. And he will hold there with two out, representing a tie run. Now he's on third base. Anything can happen. A wild pitch, a Blue pit. In fact, the one guy that Madison's facing is the guy they hit a home run off. Of. Salvador Perez, who had the home run off Bumgarner in game one of the World Series. Me and Buster talked before Perez came up, so we knew he was going to be aggressive. So we took some chances and threw some balls up above the strike zone to try to get him to chase. And a swing and a miss. He chased one letter high on one. You know, he laid off a couple, but, but he swung in a couple too. Strike two. Got him to chase another one up high. If the series could intensify anymore, it, it did by about 100 times in that last at bat. They're a strike away from winning the World Series. Great finish to game seven. The Madison Bumgarner, all that he has done to help the Giants get here. You know, it was fitting that uh, he was on the mound. Does he have one more out pitch inning? Losing wasn't an option for him. The 2-2. Two -two. pop-up went up it seemed like it stayed in the air for an eternity I've never been so nervous on an infield pop-up especially one in the foul <laughs> territory Sandoval in foul territory underneath it I see three balls I just concentrate you know catch the ball don't miss it try concentrate catch it don't get too excited side the ball down the line in foul ground he's got plenty of room it was unreal it was unreal Giants have won the World Series again for the third time in the last five years. And their hero, Madison Bumgarner. One of the greatest World Series pitchers the game has ever seen. The San Francisco Giants are the champions of the baseball world. The Giants, against all odds, have won their third World Series in five years. It was an amazing feeling, um, a lot of relief, and just happy to celebrate it with, with the, this group of guys. I'm on cloud nine right now, man. I, I, I don't know. This is unbelievable. You know, we believed in each other when no one else did. That's what's amazing about this team. The fans ought to be pumped, man. We entertained. We also did what we needed to do as athletes, and that's fulfill. Uh, a childhood dream of being able to come through in Game 7 of the World Series. To reach the, the pinnacle of all your dreams and to make the, the dream a reality, it, it's really just a tremendous joy. This group of guys are like my brothers. I love them to death. And I can't thank them enough for helping me, help me have it. 
I can't express how, how happy I am and how thankful for them to be able to, to help me experience this. To be a world champion, just what you dream of as a kid, and I can't tell you how proud I was to be a part of uh, a team coming together and, and uh, making a, a dream come true. A dream that's recurred for the Giants every other year. 2010. Swing and a miss. Yes! And that's it! 2012. And the Giants have won it all! Oh! And 2014. And the Giants have won! They have won the World Series for the third time in five years! The San Francisco trilogy is complete, and this most fascinating of patterns continues. But is this a trend about numbers or letters? As in the beauty of B, or the power of P. In the end, these San Francisco Giants have never been about personal glory. Every fiber of every one of these guys think anyone will step up. For it's the letters on the front of the jersey that matter most. A team in the truest sense. One that has earned the right to be called a dynasty. It's very tough to win a world championship in any sport, and I think we've done three out of five. We'll call it our dynasty within our own organization for our city. To be able to say that I was part of a dynasty, that wasn't even a scenario as a kid growing up. I mean, this is something that I don't even know if it's real yet to me. You know, it's the third one, so I love to be with the fans right now, so it's one of the best moments. This is a dynasty. You have to go out there and play 162 games and battle through adversity and injury. And to do that and, and get to the mountaintop three times in five years, I don't think there's many clubs that can say they've been able to do that. And in the course of this championship trifecta, the manager has proven to be one of the game's very best. You know, Boach is the only manager I've ever played for. He's the leader of this team. It'd be tough imagining someone having a better baseball mind and being a better leader for the team. I think a player's manager is a person that the players just ultimately respect. And the reason they respect Boach is because Boach is invested in making each one of them successful. It's an honor to play for a manager like Boach. To have somebody at the helm like that, it's a, it's a big reason why we have won three titles in the last five years. There's a common characteristic on this club from uh, 2010 and 2012, and that's an unselfish way in which they play the game. They're willing to set aside their own agenda and ask what's best for the club. They're just uh, playing for each other. They play for the fans. These fans, they come out in numbers, and they know how to party. <laughs> it's everything you imagine a World Series parade would be. It's something that, you know, words can't describe. so proud to see the city rally around this team the way they have. We have this, this spectacular mix of personalities and I think the community's tapped into them. A team, a city, all together. Strong together. Champions together. That's bum impression. Well, I can't do snot rockets. I think it'd be inappropriate because he gets, you know, it'd be weird. <laughs> I don't have the ears to do, you know, the 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 his facial expression. Hey, Boach, I just, I, uh, 
Man, see, I can't find it. I can't, I'm usually good at impressions too. Y'all need to find me some kind of prop, some kind of, some kind of wig or something. I need hair. That's the thing. I'm gonna have to get my hair going here. All right. I mean, my hair's looking good. How's my hair today? Anybody got hairspray? And don't, uh, don't touch my hair, all right? I got it perfect. My wife made it. Allie, she, uh, she, she did my hair today for me. Uh, Allie, my, my wife has, has got it done a right, Boach. Gave me a nice volume in the back. Nice what? Just ready to go out there and be awesome. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm just, uh, just a cowboy from North Carolina. Man, you, you ain't gonna believe what happened to me last night. It was the craziest thing I ever did. You're such a weirdo. While I was out there, you know, roping, practicing my roping in the, in the fields. That's uh, surprising. I wouldn't have thought that. You know, the snake, I hear this snake coming at me. I'm not worried about it. Sure enough, I cut it in half and the snake had just eaten some baby rabbits. You're making stuff up. And I look at the baby rabbit, I kind of poke at it a little bit, and this baby rabbit is alive. What's that? We're nursing that bad boy. We got a baby rabbit. That couldn't be a better story. I, don't I get to watch what they said? Well, <coughs> you know, I, I'm, if, if, I, I'm going to be ready in game seven. Hey, Boach, you want to win this thing, put me in the game. You know, I got 200 pitches in my arm today, so, you know, I'm, I'm not a big pitch count guy. People ask me if I get nervous, man. Nervous ain't in my DNA. I got I got at least 200 pitches in me for, for this game seven. Maybe 200. I don't know. I'm going to be dialed in. Watch me. You don't need to be down there warming up because you ain't getting in this game. He's going to hate me. <laughs> God, this, just won the World Series, this thing stinks. Yeah.